you want perfect results with your manifestation, it is very important that you learn this practice of meditation. And it's not always going to be sitting down and focusing on the breath like many people teach. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about Neville Goddard's radio talk, Meditation. I think this is wonderful because a lot of people wonder if they're in a manifestation practice, if they should be meditating as well. I think this is an excellent lecture that sums up very succinctly what exactly meditation is and how it ties into manifestation. That being said, let's get started. Neville begins. Many people tell me they cannot meditate. This seems to me a bit like saying they cannot play the piano after one attempt. Meditation, as in every art or expression, requires constant practice for perfect results. A truly great pianist, for instance, would feel he could not play his best if he missed one day of practice. If he missed a week or a month of practice, he would know that even his most uninitiated audience would recognize his defects. So it is with meditation. If we practice daily with joy in this daily habit, we perfect it as an art. I find that those who complain of the difficulty in meditation do not make it a daily practice, but rather wait until something pressing appears in their world, and then, through an act of will, try to fix their attention on the desired state. But they do not know that meditation is the education of the will, for when will and imagination are in conflict, imagination invariably wins. Now if you haven't listened to Neville Goddard before, he talks about how imagination is God himself. Imagination is also your true body. You and God are one, there is no separation. But it's not your personal self, this physical body with which you've identified yourself all your life. It is the consciousness within that is controlling and directing the actions of that body. And that is one with imagination. In fact, all that we believe to be true is actually our imagining. For this physical world is only a reflection of that which we imagine within. It is very true that many people say how difficult meditation can be without actually developing a practice, a daily practice. He says that meditation requires constant practice for perfect results. This is absolutely true, so if you want perfect results with your manifestation, it is very important that you learn this practice of meditation. And it's not always going to be sitting down and focusing on the breath like many people teach. There are all types of meditations. Your goal here is not just to meditate when you're trying to manifest something that you would consider big or really, really important. You want to do this all the time. Your power will grow more and more as you are able to be sitting in traffic and give thanks and praise that the traffic cleared up and you got home right on time. When you're wanting something specific for dinner and you give thanks and praise that you have it and you taste it here and now using your imagination and then it comes to pass. Anything big or small, you always turn to your imagination and solve every problem there with complete faith that what you desire, what you imagine, will come to pass. That is why it's a constant practice. If you never manifest anything but then something big like you really need to pay a bill and you have no idea how it's going to happen, your stress, your imagining that you need to pay a bill is going to be much stronger than your willpower trying to put yourself into the conscious state of knowing the bill is already paid. Neville continues, The dictionaries define meditation as fixing one's attention upon, as planning in the mind, as devising and looking forward, engaging in continuous and contemplative thought. A lot of nonsense has been written about meditation. Most books on the subject get the reader nowhere, for they do not explain the process of meditation. All that meditation amounts to is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention. Now many of us are not living with a controlled imagination. If you're not watching your mind throughout the day, then all day long you may be imagining arguments with your boss or coworkers, with your family or friends. You may be imagining that there will be traffic before you even get on the highway. You may be imagining all sorts of things which you don't want to experience. That is the natural action of man asleep. When we are asleep and do not know that what we imagine and think feelingly is creating our experience, we allow the mind to run wild, and the mind is an unruly animal. Begin now to watch your mind. See, are you actually imagining, thinking feelingly, that which you would like to experience, or that which you do not desire to experience? If you do not desire it, then change what you're imagining. Neville continues, Simply hold the attention on a certain idea until it fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. The power of attention shows itself the sure guarantee of an inner force. We must concentrate on the idea to be realized without permitting any distraction. This is the great secret of action. Should the attention wander, bring it back to the idea you wish to realize and do so again and again until the attention becomes immobilized and undergoes an effortless fixation upon the idea presented to it. 
The idea must hold the attention, must fascinate it, so to speak. Now this ties into his Isn't It Wonderful technique. He talks about letting the feeling of ecstatic crowd out all other feelings as you contemplate this one idea, Isn't It Wonderful? And you don't allow the mind to wander onto other subjects or other ideas or even asking why or what is wonderful because then the sensation is lost. But as you continue to fix your mind upon the idea, isn't it wonderful, isn't it wonderful, or whatever you would like to say, whatever your internal affirmation would be, then your attention will become immobilized and this idea of isn't it wonderful will crowd out all other ideas in consciousness, allowing it to take over you and you will experience it fully, losing yourself in it. That is the key of meditation. He mentions here that the idea must fascinate the mind, this is crucial. If you're not having fun, or you're not excited, or you're not really getting into what you're imagining, it will not hold your attention. You're going to be thinking about what you have to do later. You're going to be thinking about what already happened today. You're going to be letting the mind run wild and imagine all sorts of other things. But that's why this is a constant practice. Whether you're lying down in bed, sitting comfortably in a chair, listening to music, or you're going all throughout your day, you want to be able to keep your attention on imagining that which you desire to experience. It doesn't mean that you can't be engaged in what you're doing currently, but if you're going to be engaged, be engaged fully. Don't allow the mind to wander onto other subjects or ideas, especially not onto those things you do not wish to experience. Neville continues, All meditation ends at last with the thinker, and he finds he is what he himself has conceived. The undisciplined man's attention is the servant of his vision rather than its master. It is captured by the pressing rather than the important. Now this is a subtle point. Aren't we always trying to manifest something when it's pressing? That's why people will go through video after video trying to manifest a text in 30 seconds. All these sort of gimmicky things that are trying to get you what you desire. But you're coming from a state of neediness or something that is pressing rather than what is important. What is truly important is assuming that you are now your ideal. Instead of being in a seeking or survival or needy state, you enter the state of knowing that you and your father are one. You and the creative force that is imagination are one. And with continued practice, it will be much easier to focus on what is important over what is pressing. For things are only as we imagine them to be. You imagine that these bills are pressing. You imagine that you need someone by your side now. You imagine that you need all of these things. Need itself is an illusion. If you are all imagination, what could you need? There is nothing outside of you. For nothing has come to pass which was not first experienced in imagination. Neville continues. In the act of meditation, as in the act of adoration, silence is our highest praise. Let us keep our silent sanctuaries, for in them the eternal perspectives are preserved. Day by day, week by week, year by year, at times where none through love or lesser intentions were allowed to interfere, I set myself to attain mastery over my own attention and imagination. I sought out ways to make more securely my own those magical lights that dawned and faded within me. I wished to evoke them at will and to be the master of my vision. Seek to be the master of your vision and your attention and your imagination and you will find that your days become easier and easier. You become more lighthearted, taking this whole world less serious because it's only a reflection. When we are living in the three-dimensional world, we are engaging in a graveyard. Everything we see is already past. It's all gone. The whole world feeds on death. You can even see how well the grass grows, feeding on the blood of a dead animal. This whole world is a graveyard. So when you think it's so pressing and you need a million dollars, or you need that lover, or you need this or that, you understand that you are playing in the images of a reflection. If you chase these things, then you are chasing after the screen upon which is projected your consciousness. The reality is imagination. Remember this and it will be much easier to detach yourself from what you believe you need or want. Not saying that you're detaching as though you will not have it, but you detach yourself from the feeling that it is pressing because all is one and all is within you. Now I'll end this with Neville explaining his practice for maintaining his attention. I would strive to hold my attention on the activities of the day in an unwavering concentration so that not for one moment would the concentration slacken. This is an exercise, a training for higher adventures of the soul. It is no light labor. The plowman's labor working in the fields is easier by far. This is a wonderful practice. If you're familiar with revision, then you know how to, at the end of your day, revise your day so it was in alignment with your ideal. You can start off by first just reviewing your day, as he says, keeping the attention so that you can see everything that happened, 
without your attention breaking to what's going to happen tomorrow or other ideas upon which you don't need to focus in this moment. But to take it one step further and revise, imagine that you are working that ideal job, that you are going out with that ideal partner, that you are making that ideal income. Whatever it is that you're after, you can revise the events of your day to be in alignment with your ideal, whatever it is. I was talking to a client who said that they wanted to move to another country, and I suggested that at the end of the day, they relive their day as though they were already living in that country, perhaps seeing themselves speaking with the locals in their native language, working whatever their ideal job would be, perhaps taking time to clean their wonderful condo in the beautiful country. In so doing, you will carry into sleep the belief and the feeling that you are your ideal now. And as you persist in this feeling, your world will transform to reflect your imagination. If you want to dig deeper into any of this, you can visit my link below where I have my book, Doing God's Work, my specific person manifestation guide, or you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all very much, and I will see you next time. Take care.